This short was originally going to be about a fish. A big gay fish. Yep. Hello, my name is David, and I recently uploaded my animated short, Mother of Nature. This short was inspired by Guillermo del Toro's films. He's probably my favourite director, has been since Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth. I wanted to make a short about a fantasy monster. I had come straight out of the cinema after Shape of Water and started designing my own fishman. I killed two birds with one stone, turning my fishman designing into a project for college. Beyond the vague idea of a lonely fishman who really liked to waltz looking like a drag queen, I really wasn't sure what this story was going to be. But I did know it was going to be about a fish. That, that was never going to change. At the end of the college module, I had designed this sculpture. I don't really like it much. And I also really couldn't think of a decent idea for a story. I scrapped the fishman idea, but I did stick with the del Toro theme. A short about a fantasy monster. And I began to think up other storybook ideas of creatures and tragedy. The creative process I went through for this short was a little bit different from usual. I began without any script, or a real finished product in mind. I really only started with the del Toro influence and the concept of nature. Mother Nature, characterised as a beautiful, kind and cruel and indifferent god. I knew this short was going to centre around her. Mother Nature, my del Toro monster, and it would more or less act out like a montage of good and bad things. The original script for this short was just a series of notes, bullet points of imagery. A lot of it did make it into the final short. The notes included a wolf with a small animal in its jaws, looking into the middle distance with indifference. Mother Nature pitting a young Tyrannosaurus in her arms, and a large amphibian hauling itself onto land as Mother Nature assists it along. I really just got to work creating assets for those particular images. I created a list of animals I'd likely need, wolves, dinosaurs, deer, etc, and got modelling. The story just organically grew while editing and animating. It's, it's a little bit hard to describe. For example, the whole half of this short in the real world, you know, the, the baby, the parents and the book, you know, the, half the animation and most of the actual story, wasn't written or added until weeks into the animation process. Usually I'll have a very good idea of what the short is going to be by that point. By all rights, this short, given this process, should have been a disaster, it should have been a mess. And I really don't think it is. It's a bit fast paced and simple, but it's not a mess. This short organically grew from something small and simple to something bigger and bigger and bigger. It was a change of pace and it was a lot of fun. I genuinely really enjoyed working on this one with this strange process. Eventually, I did have a pretty basic outline for what this short would be, and it wasn't exactly like the final piece. For one, the real world stuff still wasn't there and it was only about two minutes long. Instead, it was narrated by a grumpy old man, mumbling philosophy. The narration was never finished, I just recorded a temporary piece for testing, but here's a sample. There's this common misconception that nature is fair, and that there's always balance. I'm not convinced. Mother Nature is the name often given to the nurturing and life-giving aspects of God's will. Let's imagine that for one second, that she were real. As the short would continue, the man would get more and more unsettled and bitter, angry, eventually ending with the reveal that his daughter had died in this semi-familiar line. Call it God, Nature, random happenstance and shit. It's all the same thing. And it ain't fair. I think it's important to know that this short, because of the weird organic process, went through a lot of forms and changes through its production. I only finished the final voice acting for this short four days before release. This animation also kinda started as a tech demo. I intended it, even at Fishman stage, to be one to two minutes long, focusing less on story and more on visuals. I felt I was getting comfortable. This 2D, 3D animation style I use was beginning to bore me, so I really wanted to push my technique further, learn new things. I really focused on pushing this short visually to its limits. Like, 
compare this young Tyrannosaurus from Mother of Nature to the Deinonychus in God's Leash, the difference in model quality is insane. That Deinonychus has something like 5 minutes of screen time and that Tyrannosaur has maybe 15 seconds. The amount of high quality models I needed to design, rig and animate for this one was the most challenging part. Some, like the deer, literally only show for 2 shots, maybe 4 seconds. I stuck with a relatively short and simple idea compared to my usual stuff because after complaints about my character animation in my last short, God's Leash, which I totally agree with, alongside my own issues with the visuals and colours in a lot of my stuff, I really wanted to try new things, tech-wise, make this prettier than anything else I've done. I love the tone, the dark twist, I really do think it's visually stunning, good imagery and colours with some of my best animation, which is really all I wanted to do with this short. It grew from a 1-2 to two minute montage of nature's kindness and cruelty to my standard fully fledged 3-4 to four minute short film in a way that was actually really fun. In a way, this short is a direct response to God's Leash, my previous animated short. I like that film enough, but I have huge issues with it. I love the story and I love the pacing and that's it. I think it's visually fine, animated fine to badly and it took fucking ages to finish. I genuinely believe that No Monsters, which is an older animation, looks better from both an animation and visual standpoint, which should not be the case. At all. With this, I wanted something quick, something pretty and something simple. Not saying it was easy, it really wasn't. <laughs> it was pretty common that I'd spend entire 12 hour days on a single shot, finishing a whole audiobook for 4 seconds of animation. The character models and backdrops are more detailed than ever. Where God's Leash was an exercise in script writing and pacing for me, Mother of Nature is a leap in tech. And a big one. I've learned a lot from this one. Designing and modelling and animating The Mother of Nature was everything. She is the whole short film and I really needed a particular look and personality for her. She's a kind, beautiful, cruel, terrifying and indifferent god that treats the world like a sandbox. Nearly every drawing I did for this short was of her. I knew from the very beginning that this short would centre around a creature design and I wanted it to be a very good design. I was aiming for something between the fawn from Pan's Labyrinth and a Spriggan from Skyrim. But it wasn't until I sketched this, it's not my best drawing, but the design, I don't know, I, I really liked this thing. Her design was heavily influenced by Del Toro's designs. I mean, she's basically a genderbend version of the fawn. There's also a very deliberate slice of H.R. Geiger in her chest. I, I can't help it. I've literally got like a mini Geiger shrine watching me as I work. I really love her design. I honestly think she's one of the best characters I've ever designed. My favourite part is the beard. Her beard and the way her face is framed around it. I like it because it's, it's unconventional. And it was taken from me fish man. I mean, I think it's the only detail from the original Fishman concept that survived into the final product. She's also, like, super attractive, right? She's supposed to be. Nature is beautiful. I mean, I made her with virtual squares, but for a tree goat woman with a beard, I mean, I mean, she's, she's pretty banging, right? 3D modeling her was another story. It took about a week. These things usually take like a day or two. She is easily the hardest and most detailed thing I've ever designed in Blender. I knew that there would be shots where she'd be huge, like anywhere between 20 to 50 feet tall, so particular areas of her body had to hold up to close-ups. Things like her hands, her face, her feet. You might get the wrong impression about my opinion of nature after images like this or this or even this whole short film. You might start to think I hate it, I find it unkind and harsh, and it is, but I love it. While working on this animation, I came across a family of toads. I'd never seen toads before, and I had searched. I was alone, in the dark, I went out specifically to finally see some frogs, because I'd never seen any. Sure, I'd seen some in zoos or in captivity, but not where they belong. 
in a muddy pond at two in the morning where each had fought and survived in the wild from tadpole to toad, just sat there being toads. It, it was incredible. I love nature. I think it's amazing. It's my favourite thing. True nature, not a, not a well-kept garden where one is planted and weeded what they like and don't like the look and smell of, but a natural ecosystem of living things fighting and coexisting, living alongside and against each other. I, I find a smelly bog full of amphibians, leeches and dragonflies far more pleasing than a well-kept colourful garden that smells of pesticide. Evolution, nature, animals, ecosystems and, and food chains, it fascinates me to no end. Scotland, besides our birds, doesn't really have the widest array of different wildlife. But I do try to go out as much as I can, finding animals in the wild, going on adventures, usually with my brother, up hills into the Scottish countryside. A handful of my shorts focus on the cruelty and harshness of nature. This short is about the personification of Mother Nature, and her complete indifference, but that's one of the things I love about it. I think nature can be equal parts beautiful and horrible, and the miracles of survival of species and creatures in an unfair and strange world kind of blows my mind. I've said this again and again, but I don't think you can truly appreciate the beautiful without the horrible, and for that reason I don't think the horrible is that terrible. Yeah, nature is cruel and unfair, but it's also balanced and kind and absolutely gorgeous. It's created weird and wonderful, terrifying and beautiful things. I love it. It has appeared in a lot of my artwork and animations and it will never stop inspiring me. Right. I finally did it. There's a frog down there. There's a frog right there. There's a frog right there. There's a frog right next to me. I could be here forever. This is kind of incredible. Watch him leap into the drink. Go on. Go on. There he goes. <laughs> He's in the drink. Off he goes. Holy shit. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, this was a lot of fun to make. I love talking about nature. It's amazing. I'm actually going out tonight to see the frogs again. <laughs> Bye guys.